I love, love cucumber. It's a guinea, though. <laughs> oh, wrong. I can take him anywhere. Hey, hey, I'm Lisa, and today I'm taking you to three of my favourite Sydney city bars to enjoy my absolute favourite cocktail, the martini, and more. Together, we'll be sipping and snacking up a storm. This is Walking Up an Appetite. So in this series, over the 10 episodes, the aim was to walk 100 kilometres in search of deliciousness across Greater Sydney. And you know what? We've filmed nine so far and I've walked 109.6 kilometres. Yay me. So that means today can be quite the leisurely stroll through Sydney CBD in search of the best martinis. And today I'm strolling on Gadigal Land. Now I have switched my shorts for a dress, I've upgraded my sneakers, put some lipstick on, had a blow dry and I have a hot date. But more on that in a moment, come with me. Now you may have noticed by now that I'm a little obsessive about food and I've taken this to my search for the perfect martini. A martini at its core is gin or vodka with some dry vermouth and of course a garnish. Now, what do I look for in a good martini? There are four essential elements. One, it has to be in the right glass, long stemmed conical shape. Two, everything has to be chilled, the glass and the drink. Three, it's gotta have the absolute right ratio of ingredients. And four, perfect garnish. And my favorite martini order is vodka martini, extra dirty and extra olives. Now I know not everyone loves martinis, so I'm bringing into this episode something that everybody loves universally, the bar snack. And the bars we're going to have some really, truly snackable ones. Now I'm gonna meet someone who can out snack anyone. He is an obsessed art collector and a bit of a financial whiz. He is unpredictable and eccentric, but in the nicest possible way. He loves his Negronis and Victorian Chardonnay a little too much, and he hates walking. He is, of course, my husband of many decades, Danny Goldberg. I was on my way to a meeting, but if you've got a better offer. I do, tell I do. Me. I'm actually excited that you're joining me. You know, this is the very last episode of the very first season of Walking Up an Appetite. Between us, he has been telling everyone he knows that he's doing this episode, so I think he's even more excited than I am. True. All right, let's go. So, it's been a huge 776 steps to get here from King Street Wharf. We're at our first stop, which is a bar called PS40. And this is the quintessential laneway bar, so much so you can't even see it from the street. You've got to come down this tiny lane, then you walk down the stairs, and when you get there, what a surprise. It's done up in black and white, it's full of light, open kitchen, run by hospitality guys, so you really, really feel like you're in good hands. You ready for the first of today's tipples? Well, it's midday somewhere, right? <laughs> it's true. PS40 is inspired by one of my favorite chefs in New York called Wiley DeFresne. Is a restaurant called WD50 that was really well known for pushing the boundaries, doing new things, and after following him so much, we opened a soda company and a bar called uh, Pop Soda, and we were on 40 King Street, so we thought it was apt to name it PS40. I think a great cocktail is elevated by small pieces of care and touch. So every single element of a cocktail we look over and comb over meticulously and those small little instances create what I believe is a great cocktail. I'm just going to ease myself into the afternoon of martinis with this fig leaf martini specialty of the house. What I love is that it's served on this frozen tile, the glass is fully chilled good start. Mm. This martini is quite exceptional. They're using Archie Rose vodka, verjuice, which is the juice of unripe grapes. Secret ingredient is the fig leaf, which they have cooked or actually sous vide into the vermouth. 
it's such an amazing combo. You've got this hint of sweetness from the verjuice and this flavor from the fig leaf that is so good, pairs so well with the rest of the ingredients. I love it. So what have you got? So this is a five spice margarita made with grapefruit juice. Oh, your favorite. It is. <laughs> it's just a refreshing way to start the afternoon <laughs> with a bit of grog. So they're really well known here for their Catalan style flatbreads, which are these. And they look absolutely amazing. This one here is a zucchini sofrito, looks epic. And you've got a chorizo and cheese and chili, which you're gonna love those chilies, I think. And look how cute this is. They cut into nice little slices. Mm. Right. Mm. Oh, it's so good. The base is doughy and yeasty with a really good crust. And then there's a zucchini sofrito, which is a slow cooked zucchini with onion, garlic, sweated down, etc. chili. So flavoursome. And then it's put on top with some zucchini strips and feta and chives. It's just a match made in heaven. I love this. I love this too. Mm. So come to PS40, actually run to PS40 for the fig leaf martini and stay a whole lot longer for this incredible zucchini sofrito flatbread. Cheers. Cheers. So we have been married like a hundred thousand years, no, no, 34 years. Joy. Bliss. <laughs> and we have got four grown up kids and they've got great partners. We have got one gorgeous granddaughter. And two great gorgeous groodles, That's Cooper true. and Winston. And I've been thinking since I've been exploring the bars of Sydney that it's time that we brought this back into our life. How about one bar hopping afternoon a week? In a different area each time. Shall we do it? Sounds great. So happy to hear that. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> On a serious note though, please drink responsibly. I am really pacing myself this afternoon. I'm not suggesting you go out and drink three martinis in one afternoon. Every bar has really good non-alcohol alternatives. Are they ready for the next one? Let's do it. We've arrived at our second stop after this ridiculously relaxed day of walking. We've done a huge um, 2,684 steps to get here. We are now at Apollonia. It's a bar that's in Hinchcliffe House. This is a old world style drinking den underground in this relatively new establishment that has four levels of eating and drinking venues. The bar is called Apollonia, named after the wife of Michael Corleone from The Godfather. And it promises romanticism, escapism, and hopefully nothing too explosive. No, no, Apollonia! Sounds intriguing, huh? So long as I wake up next to you <laughs> and not a dead horse's head, it sounds exciting. Come on. It was a dream of one of our owners. He's always wanted to make a Godfather themed bar and he's been an avid fan of the book since day dot. There's this point in time in the movie where you see a bar, but in the book it's described really well. So this is our interpretation of what the Sicilian den would look like in modern day times. I love the snack menu here. Where did the inspiration come from? So it's very much uh, Sicilian traditions and also very small light snacks that you can just share with friends and family. It's all about bringing the Italian culture into the environment as well. I am super excited because I've ordered my favorite all-time martini, which is vodka martini, extra dirty, extra olives. So I don't know if you know this, but there is a superstition apparently that olives have to be served in odd numbers only. So one or three. And you're, Five's too many. you're big on a superstition, aren't I you? am, I really am. There's a funny story from a bar that was a mafioso hangout in Manhattan back in the day. And apparently, if you went there and had a martini and they put two olives in it, it was a sign that someone was out to get you that night, right? The horse's head comes back exactly, to you. Exactly, exactly. But something funny is when I was in Melbourne last month, I went to two bars, different bars, and I got two different martinis with two olives in each one. Yeah. Exactly. Should I be watching my back? I'll watch your back. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. 
The taste of it is slightly salty, which I love from the olive brine, but it's so smooth and maybe too easy to drink. Yeah. And what I love, these big, fat, buttery Sicilian olives. Skewer, yay. Little dish to put the pips in, double yay. Mm. How's your Negroni? So I'm a Negroni snob, as you know. Important things are a big cube of ice so it doesn't dilute the alcohol. Here, what they've done is they had a gin they wanted to use and they found two complementary vermouths which make a blend and it's great. So we've ordered a few things from the snack menu. We've ordered some lovely olives with lemon and thyme, some bread, which they make here. They actually mill it in-house, the flour, how about that? And some arancini. I mean, you can't be more Sicilian than that. I know you've been eyeing these, I can, I can feel it. So these are pumpkin and goat curd arancini. They're very, very... Wonderful is the word you're looking for. <laughs> They're quite heavy for their size, which surprised me. A bit me. like me. <laughs> exactly how you want an arancini. Mm. Crisp on the outside, crunchy, soft, flavoursome inside. And a perfect compliment. Mm. So definitely come to Apollonia for the dirty martini with olives and the Apollonia Negroni and stay for the bar snacks. Cheers. All right, we are two martinis down and it's really started to rain. But since I'm so relaxed from those two martinis, I have a big favour to ask you. If you want to see another season of this show, and I really hope you do because I have loved making it, please like, click on like, subscribe to the channel and then share it with everybody you know on all your social media channels. Thank you. Are you ready for some martini fun facts? Well, I think now before the third one is the best time. <laughs> I agree. A martini is what's known as a short drink. It's pretty much all alcohol, no mixes like juice or soda. And it's stirred with ice, so it adds a little bit of water and makes that perfect combination. James Bond wanted his martini shaken, not stirred. But should a martini be shaken or stirred? It's a huge debate. Martinis were first made in the early 1900s. It was made with gin with a little bit of dry vermouth. And vodka has now become an acceptable alternative to gin, for most people anyway. The ratio of gin or vodka to vermouth has changed over the years. It started at two to one, and now it can just be the wave of a vermouth bottle. Winston Churchill once said, when asked how he liked his cocktail, he said, I like to observe the vermouth from across the room. And of course, we can't forget the classic garnish, a twist of lemon or an olive. So it's been an afternoon long on drinking and short on walking. You must be happy. <laughs> and we have walked a huge 3,622 steps to get here, 2.3 kilometres, all the way to Dean and Nancy on 22, our final stop for the day. This is a classic hotel cocktail bar, atop Sydney's A Bayadena Hotel, and it arguably has one of the best drinking views in the city. And it has a cocktail menu put together by the award-winning crew from Maybe Sammy, which makes it really worth visiting. Beautiful place, I just Thank love you. it. Tell me, what do you love about it? The atmosphere, the, the view, the looking after guests, connecting with people, and being on top of Sydney, in the middle of the CBD, that's pretty much <laughs> the reason why. The big martini question, shaken or stirred? Can I say both? Yes. You can say whatever <laughs> you like. On the, depends on the moment of the day. If it's maybe cold or it's wintery, it's summery. I do prefer a stir martini dry because it has more, you know, bold flavor and is more rich. But why not on a summer day having a Vesper shaken gives that more aeration to the drink and it's, you know, lighter to enjoy. Yeah, I would say both. The view I was talking about is really quite fabulous because you feel like you're sort of floating 
in amongst all these city buildings. So I imagine that couples come here on a date or whatever and instead of gazing in each other's eyes, they're looking at the buildings around. I know if I came with Danny, he would be gazing in my... Gazing. Oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah. Would you be? Yeah, sure. For sure. <laughs> and I guess to go with the theatre of the place, with the music and the view, is the way the trolley comes to the table. And Stefano just made it, you know, he chilled the glass on the spot. Quite a thing to see. It makes the martini just that little bit more special. I have a vodka martini, extra dirty, with a little surprise element in this one. It is cold and crisp with a beautiful savoury edge that I love. They've added orange bitters in it, which I've actually never had in a martini, which really takes it to another level. Very briny, which I love. You know, I really love the saltiness. And of course, three olives. I'm pretty happy. <laughs> you couldn't wait. Well, <laughs> there's not much left, so the facts speak for themselves. It's a classic Negroni, and what I love is they brand the big cube of ice with their symbol 21. Maybe 22. <laughs> oh, maybe, but three Negronis later, yeah, it happens. You must be super happy that their bar snack menu is extensive. So we've gone all out. It's our last stop. We've ordered pretty much everything and we're just going to mow our way through it. This is the Dean and Nancy XO Milk Bun. Interesting. It does look yeah, so, but it does. the proof is in the tasting. True. Pretty good. Bloody good. So come to Dean and Nancy on 22 for the really excellent classic martini and stay for the extensive bar menu, the cheese plate, and of course, the view. So Danny, our day together has come to an end. It has been a pleasure strolling, sipping and snacking with you. And you know what's really good? I'm gonna get lucky tonight. <laughs> <laughs> That's not what I was going to say. Thank God I'm not the designated driver. We are Ubering home. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> so what a day. We've been to three unique Sydney City bars. We've enjoyed three really excellent martinis, lots of snacks. And now I'm going to take you back to my kitchen where I'm going to make you my version of a three olive martini and three memorable snacks that I think are going to be part of your repertoire forever. What a night we had last night. Lots of martinis, maybe one too many. And how good were all those snacks? I loved it. And as much as I love going to bars, I also love having friends over for a drink. So here's the funny thing. So growing up, my mum used to always say, oh, we're having so-and-so over for a drink and a nut. Yeah, you heard me, a drink and a nut. So when we published our last cookbook, The Monday Morning Cooking Club, Now For Something Sweet, we've got one savoury chapter in it and we called it A Drink and a Nut. And it's honouring my mum and her drink and nuts and honouring my dad, who was the one who used to make the roasted almonds that they served when they had friends for a drink and a nut. Now, what do you call it when you have friends over for a drink? I think I'm gonna upgrade the drink and a nut and go drink and a snack. So I come to my place and now, for a drink and a snack, and I'm gonna tell you my favorite three. One, a nut of any type. Two, a raw fish, tartar, a ceviche, carpaccio, something like that. And finally, which I always love, is either a pastry bought from your local patisserie or something you've whipped up in the freezer, ready to cook as soon as your friends walk in. And we're gonna start with the nuts. If you wanna keep it simple, Nothing beats roasted, salted pistachios in the shell, but let's take it one step further with caramelized spicy nuts. So first we've got equal quantities of my favorite three nuts, cashews, almonds, and peanuts into a heat proof bowl. We're gonna make a caramel with the sugar and the water. We'll stir it over heat till the sugar dissolves and then let it simmer till it goes brown. Then we're gonna add butter and sriracha carefully because it will spit and stir that until it's well combined. Then I'm going to take it off the heat and I'm going to add the salt and the baking soda till it froths up. I'm pouring the spicy caramel over the nuts and mixing it well and tipping them onto a lined baking tray. I'm just spreading these out so they're in one layer. 
the spicy sweet smell of this is just too much. My mouth is watering like mad. I can't wait to dig into these. I'm gonna set the timer for 30 minutes and have a look. Now to the raw fish. This is a dish that you can whip up so easily. Grab your fish on the way home, pick up a bunch of chives and fennel and everything else you've hopefully got in the pantry. This is my salmon carpaccio that's going to take you to summer in Italy. I find it easiest to go to the fish markets or your local fishmonger and ask them to give you some sashimi, salmon or tuna, and then put it all out on a platter just like this. And now we're going to start with all the added goodness. Starting with some anchovies, which I'm just going to mush up with a fork. Anchovies add a really great flavour and this level of saltiness that you just need. And if you don't love anchovies, you won't even notice they're there. Don't leave them out. So I'm just going to sprinkle this all over. Now some baby capers or big capers chopped up, as you wish. Sprinkle on top. I've got some fennel. I did it in the food processor or do it on a mandolin. Really finely shaved, tossed with some lemon juice and olive oil. Fresh chives or use a sliced eschalot. Either works really well. Bit of lemon juice. If you want to make this dish ahead, just don't do the lemon juice part till the very end. And some olive oil, don't be shy. I'm going to add some freshly ground black pepper. And a little bit of the, um, <laughs> I don't usually like these, but on this they look really good. They're the fronds from the top of the fennel. And if you've already chucked them out, don't worry about it, just skip it. But they do look nice. And that is it. Super easy. Serve it with golden, super crunchy toast. My third favourite snack is, of course, a pastry. And if you want to go all out, make it from scratch. Make the pastry, have them ready in the freezer. Friends walk in, pop the pastries in, and they're ready in 20 minutes. This recipe is from this book that I spoke about earlier, Now for Something Sweet in the Savoury Chapter. And it uses one of my favourite all-time pastries, a sour cream pastry from Marika Brugman back in the day. You can read all about it in the book three ingredients in this pastry, flour, unsalted butter and sour cream. Putting the flour into my food processor and my butter. I'm trying to get it to like a breadcrumb consistency. Once it's there, I'm gonna throw in the sour cream. I know people are really afraid of making pastry, but I urge you to try it, because once you do it, you'll never look back. Quick knead on the bench, just to make it smooth. Cut it out into a disc, wrap it up, and let it rest in the fridge for about 30 minutes. And then you're ready to roll. So the pastry's now been resting for half an hour, and I'm ready to roll it out. Cut it in half, flour your bench, and we need to roll it into a large rectangle. I'm really feeling the pressure here because it looks nothing like a rectangle, and I'm standing here thinking, how the hell am I gonna make this into a rectangle? But you know what, let's have faith, okay? I think it's gonna happen. This is the most beautiful, beautiful dough to work with. You can see, no tricks here, just a really supple, soft dough that rolls out like a dream. Okay, that's good enough. It's almost a rectangle. So I've got half my pastry and I've got my favorite anchovies. I'm going to cut this in half. Now I'm gonna take my little anchovies and I'm going to lay them like this, side by side. Just leave a little gap in between. Concentrating really hard here to make them look perfectly lined up so that you'll see how easy it is to roll these little babies. And then I'm gonna take this bottom half and I'm going to gently lay it on top and just join them in between, like seal them in between each anchovy. And I'm just going to take my knife and cut right in the middle. So you can see I've got nice little parcels of pastry, anchovy pastry, and now we need to make twists. So with lightly floured hands, if you need to, twist it like that and seal it shut and put it on your tray. And that's it. I can hear you all sitting there saying, I can do that. Like you really can. And it looks so impressive and it's quite simple. The beauty of these is that you can put them on the tray, pop this tray as is into the freezer, and once they freeze solid, put them into a snap lock bag. And then next time people pop in, they're ready to bake. It's unreal. Into the oven, 20 minutes. You may think I have had too many martinis in the last 24 hours, but you know what? There's always room for one more. So I'm making my favorite an extra dirty vodka martini, and the dirty just means it's got olive brine. So I start with your cocktail pitcher, half full of ice. I'm gonna add a nip of the vermouth. 
give it a little stir and discard. So what we've pretty much done is coat the ice in the vermouth. Next I'm going to add some vodka, one nip of olive brine, just stir, let it sit for a minute, just stir, let it sit for a minute. You've got to get that perfect point of dilution. Next, got my martini glass chilling, tip the ice out. My glass is lovely and cold. Already looks really good. The colour is perfect from the olive brine. Three olives. It's got to be three, that lucky number. And that's my absolute favourite extra dirty vodka martini. So here are my favourite drinks and snacks. Extra dirty vodka martini, spicy caramelised nuts, salmon carpaccio and anchovy twists. And I think I can hear my favourite drinking partner just arriving home. Well, hello you. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. All right, you're a bit, bit peckish. Ready I to sample? I would love. I was about to tell you what to start with, but you just <laughs> dive on in. So what I love about these is they're so golden and crunchy, spicy, not too sweet. What do you think? Perfect for alcohol. Salmon carpaccio, perfect with toast or crackers. Salivating. Mm. Mm. So good. The crunchiness of the toast is such a good pairing with this slightly oily salmon. The lemon and the acidity of the fennel, the freshness of the chives, the saltiness of the capers and the anchovies. It's just a good combo, isn't it? Perfect. You haven't had these for ages. They're really one of my favourites. Tell me what you think. Yum. The pastry is extraordinary. The buttery, slightly flaky pastry with that salty anchovy inside is such a good combo. It's really a winner. And remember, you can bake it straight from the freezer. Mm. Got to finish that. Thanks. <laughs> so this is the final episode of the first season of Walking Up an Appetite. And what a ball I have had walking through Greater Sydney in search of deliciousness. And it has indeed been so bloody delicious. Please remember if you've missed any episodes, go back to the channel and check them all out. There's 10 in total. Like, subscribe, and tell me where you want me to walk next. Thank you to all of you for walking up an appetite with me. Remember, there's got to be joy in the journey and deliciousness in the destination. Cheers. <laughs>